Welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images that you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. I'm going to show you a few cases of polycystic ovarian syndrome, highlighting key teaching points throughout. So case one, this was a 37-year-old female with a history of polycystic ovarian syndrome. All right, here we're looking at a transvaginal view of the right ovary, and you can see that there are multiple small peripheral follicles within the ovary. When we turn on the ovary, we again see these multiple small peripheral follicles, and then the central ovarian stroma is somewhat prominent and echogenic. There's a small amount of free fluid next to the right ovary, which is likely physiologic. Here's the uterus. Now, when we turn our attention to the contralateral left ovary, we see similar morphology, these multiple small peripheral follicles with this prominent central stroma. And you can see that these peripheral follicles have a string of pearls configuration. When we add color Doppler back to that right ovary, we see normal color Doppler flow within the ovary. We don't see any disorganized or increased flow. Same thing on the left, no focal mass or focal dominant cystic lesion, just normal vascular flow. Now let's measure the ovary. The right ovary here demonstrates a volume of 17 milliliters or 17 cc's, which is enlarged. And the left ovary is similar, about 16 cc's. So 10 cc's or more is typical for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So these patients tend to present with a classic clinical triad of oligomenorrhea, which is irregular or inconsistent menses, or anovulation, which is just lack of ovulation. Chrysotism, which is growth of dark or coarse hair in a male-like pattern, often on the face, chest, and back, and then obesity. And these patients often have an association with subfertility and recurrent pregnancy loss. Now, the Rotterdam criteria proposed in 2003 requires that to make the diagnosis of PCOS, at least two of the following are required. So one is oligo or anovulation, so some form of ovulatory dysfunction, hyperandrogenism, which can be on a clinical or biochemical basis, and then polycystic ovarian morphology on ultrasound. Now, if you notice, because we only require two of these criteria, the ovaries can be normal in PCOS on ultrasound. And that's why the term hyperandrogenic anovulation has been proposed as a more accurate description of this diagnosis, but PCOS is still the most widely used term. And then also note that you can have polycystic ovaries without a diagnosis of PCOS. So if we only have polycystic ovaries without ovulatory dysfunction or other signs of hyperandrogenism, that's not consistent with PCOS. So it's important not to under or over diagnose based on the ultrasound appearance alone. Now let's look more closely what the Rotterdam criteria decided as the ultrasound appearance for a polycystic ovary. So back in 2003, it was defined as 12 or more follicles measuring two to nine millimeters in size and or ovarian volume greater than 10 cc's in at least one ovary excluding any dominant cysts like corpus luteal cyst or other dominant follicle. Now, these specific diagnostic cutoffs have been debated over the years, and most recently in 2018, 20 or more follicles has been suggested as a more accurate cutoff to make the diagnosis, or even up to 25 follicles. So generally, 20 or more is commonly used cutoff for follicle number. And then other supportive features, as we saw in this case, would be that string of pearls sign where you have the peripheral distribution of these follicles instead of randomly scattered throughout the ovary. And then that usually is accompanied by this prominent central stroma, which may be echogenic or hyperechoic. And let's look at another supportive case here, number two. This was a 30-year-old female with a diagnosis of PCOS. And here we're looking at a transabdominal view. And without any measurement, you can see that the ovaries are enlarged. So here's the uterus, and the ovaries are nearly the size of the uterus in cross-section, which is unusually large. So then if we look more closely at that left ovary, we can see that same peripheral string of pearls appearance, these peripherally distributed small follicles measuring less than 10 millimeters in size with the prominent central stroma. Similar findings on the right ovary, peripheral distribution of these small follicles. When we evaluate that transvaginally, you can see the ovary is very large. It measures 22 cc's, much greater than 10 cc's, again with these peripheral follicles. And similar findings on the left. This ovary measures 24 cc's. So this is a typical appearance for PCOS on ultrasound. Now compare that with this case. This is a 23-year-old female with a clinical diagnosis of PCOS. Here we're looking at the right ovary on transvaginal imaging. And we do see small peripheral follicles together with a few small follicles centrally, but it's predominantly this echogenic central stroma. And the ovary measures about 11.5 milliliters in volume, which is greater than 10, but not as large as the previous case. 
And when we look at the contralateral left ovary, this ovary is actually less than 10. We only have eight milliliters in size. But again, we have these peripherally oriented follicles and this prominent central echogenic stroma. Now on this static image, you note that there's definitely not 20 follicles here. So that's why it's important to look at this in real time imaging. And in that case, you can see these multiple small peripheral follicles, at least 20. And we also see that when we look at transverse Sine imaging of that left ovary, at least 20 of these small peripheral follicles. So it's important not to just look at a static image to make the diagnosis. You need to interrogate the entire ovary. So the key points for this case, the ovarian morphology has been shown to be more important than ovarian size, but also just having a single polycystic ovary is sufficient to provide the diagnosis. So if you have a single ovary that's greater than 10 cc's in size. Now I should note that the term polycystic is generally considered incorrect. Cysts are usually pathologic, and these are follicles we're talking about. So multifollicular has been proposed as a more accurate description of the ultrasound appearance, but at this time, PCOS still remains the most widely used term. And then a final point, in postmenopausal women with new or worsening hyperandrogenism, it's also important to consider other causes of androgen excess, like androgen-secreting tumors of the ovaries or the adrenal glands. It may not be due to PCOS. So that's something else we look for when we're evaluating these patients. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. And thank you again to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great free way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Spotify or Apple or by clicking the subscribe button on YouTube. I also post interesting teaching files throughout the week that you can find by following us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit or by clicking the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life.